بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لك سمنا وبك آمنا وعليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم أمين وبعد الحمد لله we have reached the 15th night of Ramadan and so we're halfway through the month and it's important for the believer for any individual to always check in with him or herself from time to time. And what is a better time to check in with oneself than the middle of the month of Ramadan? Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in a very famous statement he says, حاسبوا أنفسكم قبل أن تحاسبوا وزنوا أعمالكم قبل أن توزن لكم. He says, Radiallahu anhu, hold yourselves accountable before you are held accountable. And weigh your deeds before they are weighed for you. And so this statement of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, it's really a, 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 if a person was to truly practice this in life, it would be a practice that could help them attain success in every aspect of life. Why? Because the opposite of regularly checking with one's, uh, oneself is ghafla. What is ghafla? Ghafla is heedlessness. It's to become complacent with what is happening and without holding yourself accountable and without taking any responsibility for your actions. And so Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he's teaching us this act, the scholars, they call muraqaba and muhasaba. And in modern terms, it's mindfulness, self-awareness, self-accountability. These are modern terminologies used for this. And they say that the most successful people are people who practice this regularly. They hold themselves accountable regularly for every day. They hold themselves accountable for how they spend their day, how they spend their week, what accomplishments they made, how much time they wasted, and so on and so forth. And the better a person can do this in his or her life, the more and the better they will be able to achieve their goals. Why? Because they always have their goal in their focus and they're always checking their performance and working to improve their performance. Right? It's when a person becomes complacent, heedless, careless, they lose sight of their objectives that they start to stumble and start to make mistakes and start to postpone things that they should have achieved a long time ago, but they see themselves regularly delaying things, del delaying things and delaying things. Why? Because they're not holding themselves accountable. And so Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he teaches us this important practice. And our scholars, of, and our scholars have documented this. In the books of Tazkiyah and Tarbiyah, they talk immensely about this act of muhasaba this act of holding oneself accountable and check in, checking in with oneself. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he's, you know, the Prophet said, if, you know, there's muhaddathun, there are people who are inspired. And he said, if there was a man to be a prophet after me, it would be Umar. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he had deep insight and deep wisdom. His statements, his, his, his duas even, I have been known to be really concise and, le and really profound. We find in his practices, one of the things he would do to hold oneself accountable, he would speak to himself. He would talk to himself. And in psychology today, they call this self-talk. They say this positive self-talk, where you speak to yourself to overcome any negative thoughts, any uh, 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 anxiety about one's uh, 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 insecurities, Right? That's positive self-talk. And there's also self-talk to ensure performance and success in one's, in one's personal life, in one's ibadat, with one's, uh, any aspect of their life. And so he would say, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he would go and he would hold himself accountable. 
And he would humble himself. He would say, you used to be a shepherd. You were a shepherd boy. Right? How dare you become arrogant today? Allah has put you in such a place. He would say this to himself, reminding himself about his humble beginnings so he doesn't let his ego creep in and think him, allow him to assume that his achievements are because of his performance. He would humble himself. Other times he would sit and he would cast his hand over a fire. And he would say, oh son, and he would stand just over a, a candle for as long as he could, a few seconds, 10 seconds. And, he, and then he would, of course, reflex, natural reflex, you remove your hand. And he would say, oh son of Khattab, you can't endure this fire for more than a few moments. How can you endure the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this would awaken him. He was a man that weeped so abundantly that the marks of his tears could be seen on his face. It left a permanent mark. You could, this was part of who he, had, who he was. And so I share this example, right? And the beautiful practices and, and deep insight and, 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 and wise words of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab عنه, for us to practice a little bit of this in our, in our Ramadan. It's the middle of Ramadan. It's the 15th night. So every believer must check in with him or herself. It is the greatest and the most sacred, it is the greatest month of the year. In it is Laylat al Qadr. It is a month in which every night servants are emancipated from the hellfire. Tonight, Allah in His decree is recording names of people who are emancipated from the hellfire. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every night, a caller calls, Ya baghi al khayri aqbil. Oh, one who seeks good, hasten. And one who seeks evil, stop. There's a call every night, calling people to the rewards of Allah, calling them to the mercy of Allah, calling them to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the month started, we mentioned that one of the mistakes people often make in a marathon is they sprint heavily in the beginning. And what does that lead out? It leads out to burnout. By the time you get to the middle of the race, you're done. You're like, I'm, I'm going to sit out. You guys keep going. I can't hang any longer. Right? Those are rookies. Right? They're, they're usually burnt out. They're, they're, they're at the end of the competition. Right? Experienced competitors, they, they, they pace themselves. Right? They don't sprint, especially when they know, they know it's a marathon. It's, it's a 30-day marathon. And the most intense of it has yet to, has yet to come, Laylat al-Qadr in the last 10 nights. That's, no, that's the heaviest part. And so you can't overwhelm yourself in the beginning. You have to pace yourself. And you have to find a pace that you can maintain regularly. And so, of course, our fasting is fard. And the believer must maintain their fasting as that is the minimum during the day in their five prayers. Beyond that, we know that the month of Ramadan is the month of Taraweeh and Qiyam. And our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever stands in Ramadan with Iman and Ahtisab, his past sins are forgiven. And so, and this hadith we fear, right, to attain this, you would have to at least pray the majority of Ramadan. If you only prayed a small portion of it, then you haven't really stood Ramadan. You stood some of Ramadan, but you didn't stand Ramadan. Our scholars say, wara is to make sure you stand every night. If you really want to make sure that you have applied this hadith, it's to make sure you stand every night. And that's why the believer, he, doesn't, he or she doesn't minimize one night of taraweeh. If they pray in jama'ah, alhamdulillah, that's khair. If they can't pray in jama'ah, they can pray at home. Right? Taraweeh isn't a salah that is required for you to pray in jama'ah. Rather, it is not even preferred. Praying taraweeh at home and praying taraweeh in jama'ah, you still fulfill the hadith. There's no preference. Pray isha in the masjid and go pray taraweeh however you like. So the believer should what? Hold their taraweeh every single night. In congregation, alhamdulillah khair. You enjoy the tilawah of the huffad. If not, pray at, the, at your home. You still get the ajr of the hadith bi ta'ala. And so that's the first check-in. Of the 15 nights that have passed, how many nights of taraweeh have we prayed? Tayyib. 
Let's say you only prayed a few nights. If you're able to pray the next 15 nights, you still prayed the majority. If you pray tonight and the next 15 nights, you still pray tarawih the majority of the month. And inshallah, the hadith applies. So that's the first check-in. Hold yourself accountable. Maybe I didn't perform as many tarawih prayers as I wanted, but during the next 15, I will not miss a night. Right? And again, you do not have to pray in the masjid. It isn't mandatory. You can read the shortest surahs. If you want, you can read Fatiha every raka'at and Allah, uh, Qulhu Allah Ahad and make your sujood and pray your four raka'at, eight raka'at, pray your witr with Fatiha, with fatiha and Qulhu Allah Ahad and Alhamdulillah in 15 minutes you made your taraweeh prayer. That's sufficient. Knowing the fiqh is important because fiqh teaches you the minimums and the maximums. It teaches you what you need to do to fulfill the minimum deed and for you to get the ajr. And it teaches you, okay, here are all the other things you could do to maximize your ajr, right? It's important to know that because this helps you pace yourself. So Taraweeh. The second is Quran. And this is the month of Quran. And so if a Muslim must ask himself, we are an ummah of Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ju'ilat anajinu ummati fi suduriha. The scriptures of my ummah have been put in their hearts. My ummah is a nation that memorizes its scripture. This is the month of the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever doesn't recite this Quran and beautify their voice, he's not from among us. So this is the month of Quran. The believer must check in with himself or herself. How much of my time, the past 15 nights of Ramadan, have I dedicated to the Quran? Am I happy? Have I achieved my goal? Set a goal for yourself. It can be anything. It can be, you know, this month I'm going to memorize Juz Amma. Or I'm going to review Juz Amma and I'm going to make sure my Juz Amma is perfect. That's an excellent goal. And you work on that. It can be, I'm going, I'm going to read the Qur'an, a juz every day, so I can finish the Qur'an, entire Qur'an, and make a khatim of the Qur'an. That's a wonderful goal. It can be, I'm going to read less than that, or more than that. But make a goal. Because that's the first thing. You set a goal for yourself, and then you hold yourself accountable to that goal. You make sure that, okay, if I fall short, I'm going to make it up, and I'm going to strive to make sure I fulfill that goal. Make sure that goal is one that is practical for you. And here with the Qur'an, its understanding is important, but its recitation is important. Because the Qur'an is the divine word of Allah. It is uncreated. It is, it is the most sacred thing in existence. It's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. غير مخلوق. It isn't like the rest of the creation. And so the person must dedicate some time in this month for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also character. Things happen in life. Conflicts happen. Issue might happen between a friend and another, between a brother, between brothers, between friends, between spouses, between a child and a parent, whatever it is. And maybe your anger, your frustration got the best of you. And maybe there were moments during the month where you're not too proud of yourself and you're not too proud of how you reacted to a certain situation. Hold yourself accountable. During this month, my character will be better in the second half. I will improve myself. I will, I will practice better self-restraint. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and assistance to worship Him in a matter that pleases Him. We ask Allah to, give, to make, grant us steadfastness in His worship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make His remembrance and worship easy and beloved to us and to assist us with it. We ask Allah to forgive us, our parents, our teachers, and all of the Muslimin. We ask Allah to make our, the second half of our Ramadan better than the first half. And we ask Allah to grant us Laylat al-Qadr to make us among those who stand in it with Iman and Ihtisab. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.